Hey you guys, just a quick update today on the question, is China about to ditch COVID zero? I'm Andy Borum, this is Reports on China. Let's get reporting. Hey you guys, welcome back to Reports on China. Today I just want to give you a quick update on the situation with COVID zero here in China. Now I know you guys want me to be talking about another topic today, but I'm kind of waiting till things cool off a bit and I have some more information. It is a very controversial topic. I think China is very split about whether they want to remove COVID zero or not. So I don't want to wade in too soon. So that's going to be coming up. But first, I just want to quickly talk about some big news from yesterday. Unfortunately, former Chinese leader Jiang Zemin passed away yesterday in Shanghai at the age of 96. Now, he was battling leukemia for a while and was not in good health. You may remember he didn't show up at the 20th Party Congress, which was a bit worrying for some people. So here on Shine.cm, which is run by Shanghai Daily, Jiang Zemin passed away due to leukemia and multiple organ failure in Shanghai at 12.13 on November 30, 2022, at the age of 90. That was yesterday. So I just want to quickly share with you guys uh, a little video uh, of an interview uh, with Jiang Zemin and a US uh, reporter uh, that I thought was kind of nice. Let's take a look. And later, when I was a teacher, I used Lincoln's Gettysburg Address in my course. Do you want me to quote some lines from it? I do indeed. I will tell you, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Why did you learn that by heart? I focused on the words, all men are created equal. All men are created equal. Right. Because this had a great influence on students when I was young. And I think what Abraham Lincoln described still remains the goal of American leaders today. It's true. Especially the last paragraph, the government of the people, by the people, and for the people, never pushed from theirs. But Abraham Lincoln was elected by the people, Uh, correct? That's right. Why is it that Americans can elect their national leaders but you apparently don't trust the Chinese people to elect your national leaders. Why? I am also an elected leader, though we have a different electoral system. Each country should have its own system because our countries have different cultures and historic traditions and different levels of education and economic development. That was Jiang Zemin there. Now, he does talk uh, about the difference between Chinese-style democracy, which is called whole-process democracy, and Western-style democracy, which people seem to hinge solely on voting, casting a vote. Obviously, there are different systems. So I have done a video on Chinese-style democracy, and I will link it down below, so check it out. But yeah, sad news there yesterday with the passing of Jiang Zemin. Now we need to talk about a meeting that took place with the Vice Premier Sun Chunlan, Uh, regarding COVID-19, the COVID-19 situation. Now, this is a very uh, significant meeting for the fact that the word COVID-0 or dynamic COVID-0 was not used, even in the Xinhua reports, which is very, you you can look into that as being very symbolic. So let's check out what the meeting was about. There's Sun Chunlan there in the middle, uh, and she's surrounded by uh, experts uh, who have uh, come to share their thoughts on epidemic containment measures, and that was yesterday as well in Beijing. So it says, Vice Premier, uh, Chinese Vice Premier Sun Chunlan on Wednesday underlined the importance of constantly optimizing the country's COVID-19 response. Sun made the remarks at the National Health Commission when listening to experts' opinions and suggestions on improving epidemic containment measures. Over the past three years, the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China and the State Council have always put people's health and safety first and effectively dealt with the uncertainties of the COVID-19 situation with a consistent strategy and flexible measures to fight the virus, Sun noted. Now, this part is key. She said the country is facing a new situation and new tasks in epidemic prevention and control as the pathogenicity of the Omicron virus weakens. 
more people are vaccinated and experience in containing the virus is accumulated. Sun urged efforts to further optimise the COVID-19 response, improve diagnosis, testing, treatment and quarantine measures, strengthen immunisation of the whole population, including the elderly, and step up the preparation of medications and other medical resources. Now, I think this part is a very important strengthen immunization of the whole population, particularly the elderly, and step up the preparation of medications and other medical resources. This is one of the keys uh, that you might read into, which goes to show that the government may be looking to uh, re remove the uh, COVID-0 policy. So obviously we know now that one of the biggest fears of removing COVID-0 is uh, the vulnerable populations, including the elderly, who are not yet vaccinated. So that is... Uh, addressing that point and also step up the preparation of medications and other medical resources. There has been talk of creating more uh, ICU beds, which are seriously lacking in China. And there is a real fear uh, that the medical system could be overrun if restrictions are completely removed. Now, I don't think restrictions are going to be completely removed. Of course, China announced uh, 20 new measures, which Sun Chunlan mentioned in the meeting. And the, here they are listed on Bloomberg. Uh, when they just list verbatim uh, what China has said, I think we can trust them. Uh, here are some of the measures. Uh, no longer identify the close contacts of close contacts. That was called Tsi Media, uh, which it has meant that there are many, uh, much less uh, lockdowns happening. Now, like I said before, it is a very controversial topic. I would say probably more than half of Chinese do not want to see COVID-0 fully removed. Uh, you've got to keep that in mind. I think if China said tomorrow, okay, all restrictions are gone, there'd be chaos and I can guarantee you there would be much more of an uproar. And you would have seen that restrictions in Guangzhou have been uh, significantly reduced as of yesterday. Many areas were let out of lockdown despite there still being around 7,000 new cases a day and also other measures like uh, cancelling citywide COVID testing. So clearly the government is uh, listening and we really need to keep a close eye. But I want to show you guys this uh, news story posted on the Xinhua Weibo page. It's in Chinese, but what I want to show you is that there is not a single mention of the term Dong Tai Qingling. Dong Tai means uh, dynamic, Qingling means zero. Uh, so, no mention of the dynamic COVID zero policy, which has been a linchpin of China's strategy over the past three years. So that is very significant. And I think we're going to see some uh, more significant changes. So like I said, it looks like the government is listening. Uh, it is still a very fluid situation. We'll see what happens in the future. But that is about it for today, you guys. Uh, let me know what you think down below. Do you think China is gearing up to uh, remove COVID zero, the COVID zero policy. Do you think it would be a better idea to keep it? Let me know down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.